Hello, okay, all right, okay, hello, hi, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to make a quick video today about the Nordrum 3P. It's my favorite piece of gear that I own. At some point in time, I owned a bunch of gear and slowly I started getting rid of all of these different pieces that I had, but the only thing that I kept was the Nordrum. Last month, I dropped an album called Precipice uh, and I'd be really glad if you listened to it. That album, uh, is 90% Nordrum, and I think it speaks to how dope this device is. So today, I just wanted to give uh, like a couple of tips and some things that I learned along the way while I was working with this device. So let's get right into it. Okay, uh, this might seem like a small thing, but this little tip here really helped with my workflow whenever I'm working with the Nordrum. Uh, if you take a look, each of these 16 buttons have two parameters here. Uh, the parameter that's on the top corresponds with this left box here, and the parameter that's at the bottom, or this lower parameter, corresponds with this box here on the right. Um, so, let's take a look at decay. If I turn this knob, I'm already getting access to this top parameter that's here. Over here, this is the envelope type, right? So I think you've got uh, a couple of different ones in here. And to access this, you'll hit lower parameter here, right? And I didn't move this. Probably can hear it better if we do. This lower parameter button works fine. However, I found a trick where if you just hold the button down, you can also get access to this lower parameter. I know this might seem like a sort of silly, insignificant thing, but not having to go to the left side of the device helped improve my speed when I'm working with the Nordrum. Typically, um, if I select one of these buttons here, I'm, my finger's already in the location, and it's just more helpful for me to be able to access both of these. The second tip is to use the left and right outputs as assignable outs. Uh, this is a tip that you can apply to any drum machine or groove box that only has stereo outputs, but has the option to pan those parts individually. When I first got the Nordrum, I thought they sort of missed an opportunity by having more individual outs, assigning something like a kick to one and a snare to another, toms and percussion to one, and then cymbals or metal sounds to the last one. When I first started working with the Nordrum, I wanted to get all the parts isolated on their own audio channel for mixing and stuff, so I would record whatever I played in as MIDI notes, and then I would disable all of the pads except for one, then I'd record that audio, and I'd repeat that process five more times, and it was this arduous 10 to 15 minute process that sort of took me out of the creative zone. So I decided to succumb to the limitation and just pan all of my low end stuff to the left and all of the high end stuff to the right. And what I found was that I'd experiment more and come up with more creative processing with just the two channels than I would if I had six different audio channels. Okay, so with this here, right, uh, we'll take this kit, right? I would probably pan that to the left, right, the low end. I would probably put that on the left too. This would go on the right for sure. Right for sure. Uh, right for sure. And I'll probably put that on the right as well. Um, with these two tracks separated like this, I almost would never run into any sort of mixing issues when I'm working in Ableton. Okay, tip number three. Typically whenever I record MIDI in, I like to use Ableton's drum rack and I just have six external instruments that I play directly in using the pads. I can also use Ableton Sequencer to program in notes and essentially treat the Nordrum like a drum machine. And it lets me create patterns that I typically wouldn't be able to play in. Uh, I'll be able to do something like this here. However, the Nordrum is a six part multi-timbral instrument, which means that you can play each of these six pads individually and chromatically. By default, each of the pads on the Nordrum will have its own MIDI channel. So if I set my MIDI controller to channel 1, I can play pad 1 chromatically. Right here, that's pad 1. If I go to pad 2, you can see we're triggering pad 2. All right. Pad 3. Pad 4. Pad 5, 
pad six. Using the Nord drum this way essentially turns the device into a groove box, which lets you do things like this. Hi. Okay, uh, that brings me to tip number four, which is that the Nord drum is a dope synthesizer. If you take a look here, it says modeling, percussion, synthesizer, right? So the very first six wave types that are available are analog modeled waveforms. Uh, so we'll just go through these real quick here. First one here, A1, that is a sine wave, right? Oh shit. Two, that's a triangle. That is a saw square. That's a high passed square. And then this is a square. And if you take a look here, your spectra or this, uh, this top parameter here is your pulse width. All the way to 50%. Okay, tip number five, and this is <laughs> number five. Number five, so we'll start here with a high pass square wave. We're gonna go up to 73. We're gonna give it a fifth. This envelope type, we're gonna change this to punchy. That's it. Let's see. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Bye.